Well, hello, good morning again, everybody. Welcome to Walking Through the Scriptures with Joseph Pahoda. I'm your host, Joseph Pahoda. And today I just want to do a quick video. We're in the series, Want to Be a Godly Man? And today we're talking about key number 18 of being a godly man. And that is be accountable, take responsibility, stop playing the blame game. And I'm going to cover that in two different avenues or two different aspects this morning or whenever you're seeing this. Number one, you know, be accountable, take responsibility, quit playing the blame game as far as when you screw up. And let's be honest, but let's, let's, let's just be honest, brothers here. Let's be a little transparent and let's be honest. Let's have some integrity here. Brothers, since we're not perfect, since we are human, we screw up. Okay? So sometimes the reason the ball got dropped, sometimes the reason X, Y, and Z didn't happen, sometimes the reason bad stuff happened is because it was our fault. Okay? You know, it's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Okay? I'm the one who dropped the ball. I'm the one who screwed up. I'm the one who didn't do what was I was supposed to do. The reason X, Y, and Z didn't happen or should have happened but didn't or the reason it should have been different is because I messed up. Brothers, we need to own that. We need to be own that. We need to own that. We need to be honest about that. And we need to take responsibility and own it and be accountable for what we did. Okay? With that being said, you know, only a narcissist blames everybody else. Well, the reason, you know, I did what I did is because of blah, 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 blah. Now, all that blah, 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 blah may be true, but at the same time, you have to own and be accountable for what you did in the midst of all that. You have to own your actions. You have to own your character or lack thereof. You have to own your bad decision making and therefore what you did because of whatever. You got to own your actions. You got to own your decisions. You got to own, you know, how you responded. You got to own your behavior. You got to own your character. You got to own the lack thereof. You got to own where you are, brothers. You got to own where you are. You got to be accountable. You got to be responsible and you have to be, you have to own it. Okay. Only a narcissist thinks it's everybody else's fault. And the reason it happened is because of somebody else. You know, they always have somebody to blame. They always have somebody to say, well, the reason it happened is because of you. you, you know, you're blah, 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 blah. Only a narcissist thinks it's somebody else's fault. Okay. A true man of God realizes it's not about us. It's about Christ. And therefore it's about becoming more and more like him. Therefore, a real person, an adult person, a mature Christian, a mature Christian man says it was me. I did this and I own my part of it. I can't answer for your part. I can't answer for what you did, but I can answer for what I do and what I did. Amen. Only a narcissist thinks it's somebody else all the time. But as a Christian, we don't do that. Why? Because we realize as a Christian, it ain't about me and everything we do is supposed to be about Christ. See, when we have that kind of mentality as a Christian, it gets rid of narcissistic tendencies. Amen? So my point is, brother, a couple of things with that. Number one, say you're sorry when you screw up. When you do something wrong, brothers, humble yourself. Quit acting like a narcissist. Quit acting like it was always somebody else's fault. Own it and then say you're sorry for what you did. Say you're sorry. Be accountable for your part in whatever happened, whatever it is. Be man enough to say you're sorry when you're wrong. Also, too, brothers, with that being said, when you screw up, and again, we all do, God knows I've done it, and I'll probably continue to screw up more in the, in the future here because I'm not human and, and I'm going to do it. But when you are wrong, when you made a wrong decision and it didn't work out or whatever, brothers, be willing to eat crow. When you did something wrong and you screwed up and you made that bad decision or whatever, and after some time passed and you realize, yeah, it really was dumb and wrong and bad, Brothers, be willing to have that egg on your face and be willing to eat crow when you were wrong. Eat it. Take it like a man, as my daddy used to say. Be willing to eat that crow when you're wrong. It doesn't taste good. Crow doesn't taste good. But guess what? You got to eat it, brothers. That's what grown, mature Christian men do. Okay? Be willing to eat the crow. Um, again, take ownership for where you are. Don't blame. Um, stop playing the victim. Stop playing the victim. Stop blaming somebody else. So that's my first part is own it, take responsibility, say you're sorry when you're wrong. The second part is, is own it, take responsibility, and be accountable for where you are in life. Quit blaming others as far as why you're not the man you want to be. Okay, I, I see that, no, no offense to young people, but I see this a lot in young people. They're always blaming somebody else and they call it the man, whether it's the white man or the, 
the government man or you know, the, re the Republican man, the, the, the Democrat man, the, the, the government man, the politicians man, the you know, feminist man, the misogynistic biblical patriarchy jerks man, the, you know, the, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? They always got somebody to blame. At the end of the day, brothers, you've got to own where you are. And at the end of the day, you have to fix where you are. You've got to own it and then you've got to do something about it. You know, years ago, there was a big battle. You know, was it, you know, nature versus nurture? You know, why are you the way you are? Is it nature versus nurture or is it a little bit of both? The reality is, brothers, you need to figure out which one that is and then do something about it. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, and this is going to be really harsh, but it's just the truth. I'm going to give you some tough love now, brothers. The reality is, whether it's nature versus nurture, the reality is nobody cares. Because when you go to your job in the morning, your, your boss is not hiring you to figure out, you know, get yourself together and figure out whether it was nature or versus nurture or a little bit of both as to why you are the way you are. No, they're paying you to do a job. And you're doing that job because you need money because if you got kids, baby needs shoes. <laughs> okay, that's just the reality of it. So you're going to get up and you're going to go to work and you're going to make money because that's what your boss is paying you to do because baby needs shoes. And you're going to have to figure out that nature versus nurture on your own. You want to know why? Because nobody cares. They're paying you to do a job. They're not paying you to figure yourself out. That's why you go to therapy. That's why you go to men's groups. That's why you go to men's Bible studies. That's why you have an accountability partners. That's why you have good godly men in your life. And you can talk about that and get all of that out in, in that setting. But in this hard, cruel world that we live in, the reality is nobody cares. I was in the army for 20 years. I had to go to war. I went to combat four times. When you're in the foxhole, nobody cares about nature versus nurture. Do your job. Because if you don't, not only you can die, but your buddy next to you can die too. Figure it out. Okay? Deal with it when the combat's over. But right now, we got a job to do. Okay? That is how life is, brothers. My point to that is, what you're not going to do, well, what, what I'm saying is, what you're going to do is you're going to, nature versus nurture, or a little bit of both, figure it out and then do something about it. That's what you're going to do. What you're not going to do is play the victim, play the blame game, blame everybody except yourself, and then now you're 30, 40, 50 years old and you're still blaming the man, whoever your man is. Again, Republicans, Democrats, politicians, politics, you know, LGBTQ, heterosexual straight, the patriarchy versus the matriarchy. You know, everybody's the man except you. Everybody's holding you down and holding, holding you back except you. Okay, what you're not going to do is blame the man, whoever your man is, and blame everybody else. And then now you're 50, 60, 70 years old and you never achieved what God wanted you to do and become the man God wanted you to be because you were blaming the man for 50 years. What you're not going to do is blame everybody else for 50 years. That's what you're not going to do. Okay, you're going to figure it out, whether it's nature versus nurture or a little bit of both. Figure out which one it is and then do something about it. Get you some therapy. Get you some godly men. Go to men's Bible studies. Go to men's retreats. Go to, go to Bible meetings with other men. Get you some godly accountability, accountability partners. Get you some godly men in your life and talk to them and vent to them and help have them pour into you so you can figure yourself out and then have them pour into you, mentor you, and then help you get to where you need to be in life. That's what you're going to do. But what you're not going to do is blame everybody until you're 50, 60, 70 years old. Blaming the man, whoever the man is, of why you're not where you are. Real men figure out where they are. They determine if it's nature versus nurture or both. They figure out where they're at and then they do something about it. Brothers, that's what you're going to do. What you're not going to do is play the blame game and play the victim for 50 years. That's what you're not going to do. Brothers, playing the victim will never get you anywhere. You got to take responsibility where you are. Now, I'm not saying there's not injustices. I'm not saying there's not bad things out there. And I'm not saying the bad that happened to you didn't happen. No, it did. It did. But now that we acknowledge that, what are we going to do about it? Because I can't, I, can't, I can't do anything about what they did to me. But my part is I can do what, how that affects me. Again, we are, we are byproducts of our past, but we should never be, never be prisoners of it. I'm going to say that again. We, we all have byproducts of our past, but we should never be a prisoner of it, meaning we should never be a prisoner of our past. So I can't, I can't do anything about what they did to me. What I can do is how that affects me and how I go from here. That's me. That's on me. That's my responsibility. As I'm empowered and graced by God to do it, 
as I walk through that process. But that's my point. I've got to be willing to make to make that time to to do the work, to walk through that process, and to get through what they did to me. Okay, I can't play the victim forever. I've got to be. I can't be a, a, a prisoner of my past. Yes, it happened, but now I have to move on and, and go through that process, and I can't stay there. I can't stay there. I got to move. Amen. That's a hard word, but it's, it, you got you got to move. You got to move. Um, why? Because hurt people hurt people. Conversely, though, healed people healed people. Okay, so you got to transition from being hurt to healed. Let Christ make that transition in your life. You got to go from hurt to heal. You can't stay hurt is my point. Because hurt people hurt people. If you stay hurt, even as a Christian, you're going to continue to hurt people, brothers. You've got to transition from hurt to healed. Otherwise, you're going to, you're going to keep hurting yourself, but you're also going to keep hurting all your loved ones around you. Let Jesus transform you from, he, from hurt to healed. Amen? Um, because again, we, we have, you know, we are byproducts of our past, but we should never be prisoners of it. Don't live in the past. You have to be healed from your past. Let Christ and let the power of God's word and the power of the Holy Spirit change you from the inside out, brothers. Otherwise, you're going to stay hurt. You're going to stay the victim. You're going to stay doing this blaming game, not only for where you are in life, but also when you get caught doing something wrong, you're going to find a way to play a victim and keep blaming others. That's what narcissists do. They never take accountability and responsibility for what they did. They're always blaming somebody else as to why they are the way they are or why they made the decisions that they made or why they are doing what they're doing. No, own where you are, own what you did. Again, so if you're wrong, say you're sorry. Say you're sorry. Own it. Be willing to eat crow when you screw up. And then try to make amends the best that you can. Move forward. Forgive yourself. Even if they don't forgive you, you forgive you, knowing that Christ forgave you. And you move on with your life the best you can. But own it. Take responsibility for what you thought, what you did, what you said. The balls you dropped, the things you didn't do for the, the, heart, the hearts you broke, whatever it is, brothers. You did it, own it. Say you're sorry. Be willing to eat crow. Quit playing the blame game and take responsibility for your actions. Amen? So I'm just looking at my notes here. I think I said everything I wanted to say there. But own it. The quicker you own it, brothers, the quicker you'll get healed. You'll transition from hurt to healed. And the quicker you own it, the freer you'll be. The longer you hang on to it, the less free you'll be. You want The Bible says in John 8, 36, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. But the reality is if you keep holding on to this ego, you keep holding on to it, it was somebody else's fault all the time, you're walking in narcissistic tendencies, brothers, and you're not free. And as long as you keep blaming everybody else for why you ain't the way, why you aren't where you are as a man, you're blaming the man, whoever the man is, particularly young people, I'm talking to you millennials and Generation Zers, Okay, you had mama issues. You had daddy issues. Mama didn't love you the way she was supposed to. Daddy didn't love you the way you were supposed to. You didn't get the nurturing you should have got. Mommy and daddy did you wrong. Amen. I'm willing to give you all that. I'm willing to give you all that. But now that it happened, my point is, yes, it happened. But now that it happened, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to stay stuck? Are you going to stay not free? Or are you going to live in the freedom that Christ literally paid on the price for you to live? Paid that price on the cross for you to live. So brothers, do you want to stay stuck or you want, or you want to stay free and then st be free and then stay in that freedom? Do you want to stay stuck or you want to stay free? If you want to be free, then you got to make some choices to get out of it. And that's hard because your flesh is going to say, well, there's no justice in that. There's no, you know, you're letting them get away with it. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that at all. They did it and they need to own that. Okay, and, and there's consequences to their sin. Trust me, there's consequences to their sin. And they got to answer for that. But my point is, don't let their sin be your sin. And now you're sinning because of their sin. Don't let their sin hold you hostage. Forgive them and don't forget, but let it go. I'm not saying forget because you don't forget. You do forget, but you don't forget. I said that in one of my last videos. Forgive them. Because that's the gift that God gives you. So they, don't, they no longer hold you hostage. It, they no longer hold that power over you. 
forgive them, and then get some therapy or something, i.e. start doing something about it. Because again, the reality is, and I hate to be insensitive, I'm not trying to be, but in this cruel, hard world that we live in, young brothers, nobody cares. Your boss ain't paying you to care. He's paying you to do a job. So they don't care about you if you were nurtured or natured. They want you to do a job. And you need to give, get money to get that job because baby needs shoes. That's just the reality of the world we live in. So get you some therapy. Get you some brothers. Get you some good Christian men. Do something to start processing your heart and heart. But start being transformed from hurt to healed. Brothers, please do this. So be accountable. Take responsibility. Own it. Either where you are in life or what you did. Own it. Say you're sorry. Be willing to eat crow. And if you are the way you are, figure out how you got there. And then do something about it. Because what you're not going to do is keep playing the blame game the rest of your life. For either where you are or what you did. You're never going to get ahead in life that way. You're going to stay hurt. And you'll never transition in the healed. Brothers, we need to start transitioning in the healed. It's time to grow up. Lovingly, it's time to grow up. Amen? So amen, everybody. This has blessed you. <laughs> as hard as it may be, hit the like button, hit the share button. And please hit the subscribe button. Get this, even though it's truth, but it's hard truth, but get this hard truth out to as many brothers as you can. Help brothers tra be transformed from hurt to healed. And again, I'm not saying it didn't happen. It did. But brothers, we can't stay there. We cannot stay in, it happened to me and I'm a victim. We got to say, hey, it happened to me, but God transformed it from my pain to my pulpit, from my mess to my message. And that's what God will do if you let him. And now you're helping other people who've been through the same garbage that you've been through. Now you can be a leader to help people, other people who've been in the same situation you were, helping them come out. But it's hard for you to help them come out if you're still in it with them. Now you got crabs in the bottle and everybody's just tearing each other down. You don't want to be there. Brothers, you don't want to be that. Don't be that crab in the bottle. Help people get out. But do that by getting out yourself. Transition from hurt to healed. Amen, brothers. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Hit the subscribe button. Until next time, know that God loves you, 92. God bless everybody.